have my foot. Welcome to The Drive with Denise DiGregoli. It's a motivational talk show that serves to bring people, places, ideas, and organizations together that can move us all forward. So uh, something a little bit different today. Um, on my Facebook page, Denise DiGregoli, or My Daily Drive, you'll find a couple of tips. We're going to start to talk about mind, body, spirit, how you feel those things creates the lifestyle you live. So today on my Facebook page, I put a couple of interesting Halloween treats up there, pumpkin spiced popcorn and dark covered chocolates with uh, assorted nut coverings, and also a way to unclog your mind if you're like me that has way too many emails and not dealing with them effectively, therefore making that distractive. Zzz. The spirit part of the show today, we're going to talk about music and the underlying connections, creativity, focus and following your true passions sort of letting the river flow and seeing what unfolds in front of you uh, i'd like to welcome my friend and longtime westport resident suzanne sheridan i'm going to tell you a little bit about her she is a songwriter a business owner a professional po portrait photographer and she has a band and part of the reason why we're having her here today is she's involved with an organization called Keys. Kids Empowered by Your Support. Correct. Did I say it correctly? You did. Okay. Thank you. Good. Welcome. Good. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. I feel very welcome. Thank you. We, it's great to be here. I'm it's, so glad you made it. I say that on TV all the time. Right. <laughs> so glad to be but here. But it's true in this case. In this case, it's true. So Suzanne is going to tell us not only about her band if you read my email, we said she had a melodic journey mm. fueled by a lot of passion, mm. sort of letting things happen. So for the people that don't know you, mm. tell us about yourself, okay. where you come from, and how'd you get to Westport? Because you've got a slogan that says, the best photographer <laughs> in New York is in Westport. I came Welcome. to be in New York City. Thank uh -huh. you. Uh, well, I'm Suzanne Sheridan, and one of the things I do is see if I can harness creativity to live a, a life that is on purpose, yeah. that has meaning for me, makes me happy, and hopefully the trickle-down effect, which is that everybody I come in contact with will get that I'm not a grouchy curmudgeon and that <laughs> I am a joyful person. I like to spread joy and happiness and, and, and you know, um, express myself. I think that you cannot be a joyful person unless you're able to express yourself so authentically yeah like you got to know yourself because right. a lot of people just run around expressing 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 right. and, it could and be it, a could nasty be, thing. it could be ugly expressing it could be ugly expressing. yeah no we need good expressing well one of the ways that I have found and while I was in New York I was blessed to find someone who got me involved in meditation and so I always like to say meditation is instead of medication <laughs> <laughs> So true. Yeah. And I meditate uh, with a group of people uh -huh. two days a week, and I also uh, meditate on my own. And it helps me organize my internal space and helps me actually connect with the best that's in me. Mm -hmm. And then I can, you know, figure out what I'm going to do that day. But it's not a doing day. It's a day of doing connected to what's important to me. Well, they say that meditation actually helps you uh, access your inner self, your, not That's your right. conditioned self, right. your raw inner self, right. where your all-knowing knowledge lies. And it's so funny it's because this morning I was listening to something on another audio podcast that said exactly that same thing. Mm. So there's no chance coincidences in the conversation we're having right, right. now. And I just want to say that the pace in which most of us live, um, I'm just talking Fairfield County, New York City, uh -huh. tri-state area, is so inhumane. It does not bring forth the most inspired, best parts of us. It's us running like little rats in a maze from place to place, and our schedules are too tight. So, so for me, when, when I hear, you know, the world is driven on Duncan, I get the feeling that we're on the wrong path and that what we need to do is to be driven mm -hmm. by what is best in us. She fits the mode of the daily drive so very well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's how you fuel your mind, body, spirit, create your lifestyle, and we're all overscheduled, we're all overstressed, right. and we're all looking for something that will relieve that. 
So that's the whole yes. purpose of the show. The goal today is if it's we... It's a very good purpose. Thank you. If we leave our audience today with one thing that helps them reshift, right. reframe, mm -hmm. and take a moment to just find that inner access to themselves so they really understand, you know, most people say, I'm not creative, Denise. I'm not creative. And well, I say, but by you, how you dress, how you spice your foods, mm. you know, the choices you make, there is creativity. There is no possibility that people are not creative. Everybody comes out of their mother creative. Right. Okay, and it's how you decide to use that creativity that defines you. So, like, if I decide, okay, I'm going to be a fashion designer, that's what defines my expression of creativity. But if I say I'm going to be a musician, and I just want to go back to that because when I was a little girl, Nobody in my family uh, was playing an instrument. Interesting. But I, I went to school, public school on Long Island, and they, gave a, they, they brought people in to play instruments, and I fell in love with the viola. And wow. so I said to my parents, I want a viola. And they go, what's a viola? You know, is that one of those big things that you carry around? I said, no, it's a little thing. It's a little bigger than a violin. So I was gifted to be able to play an instrument. My parents couldn't afford, there were six of us, six children, they couldn't afford to give us individual lessons, so right. I became the person I am because I got to study with Melvin Berger, who was one of the great violists, who was hired by our school system to be able to teach kids. And I got like this guy who played in the pit in, in, in Broadway shows and who went to England and studied over the summer, and a brilliant man who taught me how to play viola, and so that's what kept me in school. So your creativity bug was fueled by the love of music that you stumbled the cup. Yeah. yeah. So it's also about being open and uh, being uh, aware and trying new things. It right. seems to be the resounding um, mantra on the show. Just be open and aware and try new things. Right. Okay, so you're coming from Long Island. You've got the viola. Right. How do you get to Westport? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I know that might be a long... <laughs> okay, well... My mother ran over my viola by accident, and she said it was my <laughs> fault because I left it in the driveway, which is probably true. And um, Oh, God, I hope Ava doesn't do that with her <laughs> instruments. <laughs> so so I, I said, you know, I really don't want to play the viola in high school just alone. I want to sing and play. So me and my sister bought a guitar together, and we used to lead the folk mass at church mm -hmm. in high school. Then I went to college, and I studied piano, flute, uh, performed guitar, went to Paris, studied philosophy, brought my guitar, played in these little boites or little dives in Paris. I had uh -huh. a great time. And I came back and I said to my father after him sending me to college that I wanted to be a musician. And what did he say? And he said, oh, no, I wasted <laughs> all my money. And That's I said, kind of what my parents said to me <laughs> about being an artist. No. It's not really a You're waste. You're going to starve. I said, I said, it's not really a waste. Uh, I just need to try this and, and yeah. be open and try to be a musician. So I went to New York. Everybody said, you have to go to New York. So I went to New York. and Wait, I, where were you? Oh, just Long Island. I Coming back from Paris? Pa New Paltz. I oh, went New to Paltz. New Paltz okay. to school, Paris. And then I uh, went to New York City. And I lived in New York for about 20 years, at which time I met really cool people, including Laura Nero and some really great people uh, in my travels, and I got to do some jingles. I sang on the Pepsi spot. So I had quite a bit of success in New York City, and then, um, I don't know, things got a little crazy with vials of crack on my, s on my roof, and I just thought, I need hmm. to be in the country. So a friend of mine was an actress, and she said, why don't you come and live in Wilton? And that's how I got to Connecticut. It's sort of a long route. That is a melodic journey, and <laughs> along that journey, <laughs> Were there any big it? obstacles? Like, were there any t trials or tribulations? Because you seem to have a very fluid personality that kind of just let the um, river run. Yeah. Um, the only thing was that I would ask myself many times, how am I going to make a living and do my music? So in our country, we don't uh, support the arts the way in some other countries they do. So yeah. I needed to take a job in a law firm. So I would do that, and then I would come home and do music and take classes and perform. Yeah, the only thing uh, that ever gave me trouble was um, maybe staying safe, being out late at night with an instrument in my hand. Right. So I studied karate. 
and I became very, very solution oriented. Yeah. Well, wow. I just thought nobody's going to keep me home. Were you meditating at that young age, or was this something you started later? Um, I meditate. I started meditating through a Gurdjieff Uspensky group down in the New York NYU area in 1974, and I got my mantra then, and mm -hmm. um, I've just been doing it ever since. And now I have a group that I meditate with, which I love and a sangha group. They call it a sangha group, uh -huh. which is a group that just meditates. It's so cool to be in a group of people that don't talk, because I love to talk, Me but too. I also like not to talk. And the, be the most incredible blessing is to sit in a circle with people who do not ask you to talk, and who spending their time aligning with their better selves mm. at the same time I'm doing that, and then we turn around and go, thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, <laughs> I need to put that in place in our home, I think. <laughs> you know, that's a really good way to start the day. It is. Everybody and I do. I, and in my Well, The Daily Drive, the book I teach, is an active meditation. Oh, yeah. Tell me about that. Well, that's a book that is an active ref tool. Of it's a tool of reflection. Okay. And it's in nine minutes a day to kind of steer your thoughts, uh, steer your actions, mm. set the tone of your day. Mm. So it's a little pre-spawning visualization. I think I need that. Yeah. And <laughs> because, you know, we are all artists and creative to some degree, yes. and through our digital world we've kind of disconnected, right? The second greatest thing to your mind are these. And I believe as an artist, tactical, active meditation sort of sets the tone. A and a very simple example would be when you write down your grocery list, you remember it. Right. When you write down a goal or an intention, you clarify it with a whole lot of energy when you write it down. But this isn't about me today, no, it's no, about you. No, I, I, I think I want to segue from that thought to the Keys okay. project because when you teach a child an instrument, right. it civilizes them, it shows them how to use their hands to create beauty, yeah. it creates teamwork, it creates better uh, skills. I mean, the Bridgeport school systems have the lowest rate of graduation of any school in and one of the lowest in Connecticut and so when Rob created this program mm -hmm. he started there was no funding whatsoever he brought his keyboard set it up in a hallway and started with four students I saw the video that said there was no classroom no they classroom. literally taught these children in a hallway and good for him we're gonna have and him on and he can oh really good. expand and the, and the kids now 500 kids that he helps those children are doing really well in school. So I right. believe that there's a connection between music and dexterity and Tactical, using the hands yeah. uh, and their, their scores in school. Right. I mean, it, it, there's a direct correlation to that and their mathematic abilities, their yes. scientific abilities. And right. I did look at, what is his website? Do you know the Keys? name? Keys. 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 It's Kids Empowered by Your Support. Right, and you can go there and look at the uh, website that they have. It's a very interesting um, video that they talk about the distance between uh, traditional public schools and perhaps what's going on in, in Bridgeport and how the music lessons that he's providing are really changing people's lives. They really change people's lives and drive people in the right direction. Do you teach music? Uh, I used to teach music. Used to I teach used to music. teach uh, keyboard and guitar. And now, you know, with everything, with the Legacy Project and with uh, my performing more, what, one of the things I realized was that I really wanted to perform again. Right. And, you know, here I am, not exactly a spring chicken, as they say, but I said, but. I Yet. How about not but? How about yet? I'm not yet a spring chicken. What? Yet. I'm not yet. No, not yet. Just not say yet. Yet I'm not maybe as... Yet I'm not Yeah, maybe. whatever. Yet is better than but. Oh, I see. Right? Yet. It's never free. It's complimentary. I see. It doesn't smell. It has a unique aroma. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, then what was I saying? Um, I decided, well, I want to get back into the music, but I needed to figure out how I wanted to do that. And one of the things was I didn't hear any Joni Mitchell or Leonard Cohen on the radio. Yeah, it had kind of gone by. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And the songs that I was listening to felt, to me, deadening. Now, I felt this is a time when we need to reinfuse music with the power of the soul, the power of the spirit, the passions. They talked about love and death in, with intense emotion. Right. And when you bring that in with a, a, an incredible band, I mean, it's a story about a life well lived. That's what their music is. To yeah, me. Well, 
you know. And so I performed it thanks to Roseanne, uh, my partner and I, who produced at Long Wharf Theater. We did a show, uh, Joni Mitchell, Leonard Cohn with the band, and some people said it was better than things they've seen on Broadway. I believe it because I looked at a few of your uh, your clips. So tell us what you're doing for the Keys, okay. your band, and some gigantic choir that Rob has. Give okay. us the lowdown on okay. that. Okay. So, uh, well, Rob had a need of people to do, you know, help him with financial support. Right. So I said, I'll do a concert for you guys as a fundraiser. And I have a really great band, Bob Cooper on keyboards, Joe Mayo on s woodwinds of all kinds. Wow. And, yeah, and Marshall Rosenberg on percussion. Are these local guys? Marshall's in New York, and Joe Mayo was on Doc Severinsen's band, so he's pretty Ooh. high up there on the right. food chain. Yeah. And Bob is, is a, a, a transplant from Boston, and these guys are fantastic musicians. I play guitars, <laughs> different guitars set to different Joni Mitchell tunings, and I sing her music, and, um, and Leonard Cohen's music, which is really well done when a woman sings it. Interesting. Because, yeah, because sometimes you can't hear what he's singing about because of his voice. Oh. As much as I love him, uh -huh. he doesn't have a great voice, I don't think. So Hopefully he's not listening right now. He just I, said, I'm you sorry, have not such Leonard. a great voice. I love you, Leonard, <laughs> but it's hard to hear your songs through your voice. Okay. I think he'd agree. You're improving them. Yet I am improving Yet them. You're the, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like Jennifer Warren. She did an album of his songs called uh, The... Blue Raincoat album, uh -huh. and you can hear every word, and he loved it. He, he was producing it, so he understands that a female voice does his music well. Anyway, I am going to be at the Unitarian Church with Rob Sylvan, who is a brilliant keyboardist. He's the director of keys. Yes. Who got you involved. And he's also the head of the Talmadge Hill Choir in Darien. And they are going to back me up, and we're going to do songs from Joni, from Leonard, from James Taylor, and we're calling it Let the River Run, because we were so inspired by Carly Simon's song, Let the River Run, uh -huh. at our last Carly, Carly um, Simon, Joni Mitchell, Carol Cohn, Carol King concert, that we said, oh, I'd love to hear that Let the River Run with a choir. So uh -huh. Rob said yes, he'll fold the choir in, and we're going to do this music, and the, mu the money goes to Keys. All of the money? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have a cost basis on how much each child it is, you know, how we much knew, they need? Right. For example, last week, the Burn Camp Foundation needed $2,500 per child oh. to send them to camp. Do we have a, an idea? You know, it's really low. It's I think low. it's something like $100 per kid, really. And, okay. and people who have any gently used instruments are you know if they can give those instruments to the keys foundation that'd be Ooh. great yeah okay so if you have them in your closet and you're not using them we do have to take a quick break i want to hold that thought because we're okay. going to talk about um what we're going to do for the keys and okay, cool. what's next on your list it's the drive with denise de Grigoli live from han network here in shelton we'll be right back darian sports shop is a unique store because it's a family store a busy mom can come in with kids in tow and find everything she needs for them and even find a dress for herself for Saturday night. And if she's in a rush, she can simply go home and order it from us that night. We'll deliver it the next day. The Darien Sports Shop. We're pretty on the outside and amazing on the inside. Conveniently located with free and easy parking at 1127 Post Road, Darien, Connecticut. Or shop us online at dariensport.com. It's time to come back to hometown banking, where people are taken into account, not just balances. Where community comes first. A place where there's more than one kind of interest. Where automation will never replace consideration. Where they not only know your name, they know your dog's name too. It's time to expect more. It's time to bank well. Bank smart. Bank local. Bank well.
tired of all the bull? Relax and enjoy the experience of buying a car at Pamby Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram. No bull allowed. Back to school means back to busy, and Stewart's Market can save you precious time by stocking all of your favorite essentials under one roof. For a healthy start to school, we have all the ingredients. Walter Stewart's, your family-owned fresh local market, 229 Elm Street and at stewartsmarket.com. We're back. It's The Drive with Denise DiGregoli. It's a weekly motivational talk show here on hand that brings together people, places, ideas, and organizations that fuel us and move us forward. So I want you to check in with my Facebook page. I put up some interesting um, healthy recipes for your body this week in lieu of Halloween, stuff that you can share with those little trick-or-treaters, and an interesting idea for your mind on how to not have a clogged up email. My Facebook page is either under Denise DiGregoli or My Daily Drive. We're live here at HAN Network, as I said, and you can find us again on demand later on. If you're just tuning in, we have the fabulous Suzanne Sheridan, singer, songwriter, oh, go professional on. portrait <laughs> photographer, business owner. We haven't even got to the legacy project that she and her partner, Roseanne, manage and have been the... Uh, She's the driving force. She's in the, the driving force. We're going to get to that probably in the last half of the show. We're still talking about keys. Good. Right? Keysmusic.org. Keysmusic.org, where we are providing one on one and group lessons to the children in Bridgeport to not only encourage their musical lives, but mm -hmm. to help them. It's known to improve their test scores, their IQ, their self esteem, and help them deal with stress. And I would say that fits the purpose of the drive because it certainly moves us forward. And definitely, definitely. And, and music, music taught me one thing that I will never forget, and that is that beauty exists for its own self. Right. It, it doesn't need a practical reason. Right. That when you create music, your soul is alive and you are connected to the things that matter. That's well, all that really, you know, that to me, that's the most important reason to do it. I will say, though, in the tail end of my newsletter, for those of you that get it, um, and you can get it at denisedegrigley.com, but I said not all, most music is good fuel, not mm -hmm. necessarily all. Right. There was this uh, study that a, a Japanese gentleman did, I don't know, in the 70s, where he played very acid rock to oh, yeah. to the frozen water to the to frozen the water, water yeah. as opposed to you know mozart and the way that the crystals formed were very different with the sort of acidic music and the mm -hmm. more fluid music so Definitely. i think we have to be mindful of how we fuel our minds and certainly yes. the kind of music that entices you and what you're doing for our community is probably the fuel we want to focus on today. So tell mm. us more about that. Tell us about the what you're going to do in the concert and what you hope to achieve for Keys. Great. Uh, well, Rob and the choir are going to be performing, and then I'm going to do some numbers with the choir and as duets with some of their uh, performers that oh. perform in the choir. And then we're all going to do Let the River Run together. Uh -huh. And then we're taking a small break, and then the band is going to perform, and then we'll bring back the choir at the end. So it's going to be amazing. And s there we also have some wonderful men uh, at the church who play African drums who want to be involved. So they're going to be part of Let the River Run, which so is it's a, a very multifaceted crowd. Yeah, Let the River Run is a song that Carly Simon wrote as an ode to New York City, and she wanted a Walt Whitman feel in the lyrics and a sort of a African drum beat in the in the groove right and she achieved that and that was in Working Girl and it was huge. and she won in, a, uh, in 1988 she didn't did. she win an award yes she did right okay mm -hmm. I think it was in a Grammy Award so you've got your music and you're doing this fundraiser I, we have a little flyer I'm gonna flash it up for you uh, it's December 5th right okay. December 5th at 8 p.m. at the Unitarian Church in Westport and, and you can also visit VoicesCafe.org for more information right. and to purchase a ticket, I'm assuming. That's right. And we're very excited to be involved with Voices because Voices said yes when we said, would you be part of this with us? We really want to help Keys. And they said, absolutely. Let us know how we can help. Now, will you have any of the kids from Keys there that night? Yes. I'm hoping that one of them or two of them will do a little music. 
Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to having Rob on, and he can really give us, maybe we'll have some of the kids in to play for that. Oh, that will be great. So beyond your music, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about your other life. Lives. Okay. Well, um, one of the things that I love to do is to photograph people. Uh -huh. And I do that for them because a lot of people who are in Fairfield County are movers and shakers. They need to have a photograph that at least meets their clientele halfway. So something that shows their energy. And so I use my meditation, a guided meditation, in my photography. So With I, them? Oh, absolutely. With my clients. What, what if they have resistance and they don't want to meditate? Well, there's very few people that do, and usually their photographs don't come out well, and they end up coming back, and we do it then. So <laughs> it's like you can do it now, or you can do it later. It's up to you. <laughs> so, so I've only had one or two people that have had, even type A personality people, they go, I don't know any of those. No. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. And so, um, you know, I do that with them because I feel it's not fair to them to to make them stand in front of the camera and not be ready to be photographed mm -hmm. and to me being ready to be photographed is they're available they are mm -hmm. present and they are willing to share what's inside as well as what's outside so how long is that process to get them oh, in a meditative state 10 minutes, 15 minutes it's a guided meditation and then they're open to it and maybe you feel that over the years that you're getting better results oh I've I've been guided We're to work like this from the beginning. All right, I'm bringing the daily drive years. in there, and they're going to have to do some of that too. <laughs> I'm just okay. kidding. Well, I'd be interested in seeing what that is. The I know daily I, haven't drive. I haven't showed you that yet because I love uh, Julia Cameron's work mm -hmm. and stuff like that. It's not the same as automatic writing and and what Julia Cameron does. Mm -hmm. It's definitely guided prompts that are flexible mm. artistically to you mm. or to each person that uses it. Sounds really good. Again, it's not about me today, but I am going to show it to you. Sounds really good. I'd still <laughs> like to know more about that, okay. but. We'll talk. We'll talk, right. Um, so then I do also, Roseanne and I decided that we wanted to work together. And one of the things we felt was missing was the sound of our parents' voices. Both of our parents have passed on. Okay, I'm sorry to and, hear that. Yeah, and we, we didn't have the sound of their voices anywhere. So we said, wouldn't it be great to be able to provide a service for people where they could have their parents come in, we could have them talk about themselves, which most older people don't get a chance to talk about themselves much. Right. And it's not the same as being in a party and someone says, what did you do today? It's like, where were you born? And what are the important things to you? And, and yeah. then you can leave that for your grandchildren. So we're, we're really enjoying the process of the Legacy Project. And we've done quite a few of them. And people get a lot out of it, either audio mm -hmm. interviews on CD or you know whatever. Um, video interviews, still photography, and I make books from uh -huh. the still photography. Both their old photographs, which I fix up mm -hmm. and place in the book, as well as it could be like an event, like we just finished doing a, a lovely woman. She just turned 100. Wow. And her. Well, I tell Troy all the time I'm going to 104. <laughs> oh, good. So I'm definitely a candidate for the book. Oh, yeah, definitely. And this woman uh, was from upstate Connecticut. Uh, but her son-in-law and her daughter-in-law contacted me, didn't know anybody in Westport, and was having a party at Rizzuto's. And I said, I'll do the party at Rizzuto's. And then she goes, oh, by the way, we're missing 90 years of her life before the party. <laughs> Could you do something with that? So they had photos, and I incorporated them, and it was a beautiful book. You know, a, an, another active component of the Daily Drive is just that, chronicling your life. Mm. For me... Part of my active reflection is when you chronicle your life, because when you're busy on that hamster wheel and all of those movers and shakers that you're filming, yes. we <laughs> forget how abundant our life is. Yes. So when you chronicle it, you journal it, mm -hmm. you have something to reflect back on. And normally what happens right. for me and some of the people that do the daily drive is like, oh, my life isn't so out of whack anyways. Mm -hmm. I got to meet with nice people like Suzanne. I got to mm -hmm. do fun things here on HAN Network. You know, a Beyond being busy and maybe too much of a human doing, mm. I really am a human being when I look back at that chronicle. So That's I, I salute said. that. That's beautifully said. I think everyone, now what is the website for Legacy Project? Legacy it's, Project? It's thelegacyprojectusa.com. So for somebody that meditates mm -hmm. and is musically inclined mm -hmm. and very creative mm -hmm. and obviously a successful business owner, mm -hmm. what is, what is it that fuels your drive? Is it one thing you can pinpoint? 
Is it just actively participating in your life and mm -hmm. doing this meditative state? But for many people, when they hear somebody that has a whole lot of things on the go, mm -hmm. or at least the feedback I get is, I could never do that. Well, I think everybody can. And one of the things you have to ask yourself, and perhaps in the morning is the best time to do this, is ask yourself, what's important to me? What Today. Yeah. What, what gives me happiness? What, what, if I did it, would make me happy? And most people say, oh, that's selfish, yeah. asking yourself what will make you happy. But it isn't, because a happy person creates a happy family, creates a happy city, creates a happy world. Right. So you have to start with that's what... That's the river flowing. There you go. That's the river. That's oh, the I'm river getting flowing. goosebumps. Woo. <laughs> and, um, and it's all about finding out you're alive. Why not be fully alive? Okay, so that's to me what fuels me is wanting to do good, to help people to learn that it's not that impossible to be creative, and, and to encourage them through my expression of myself uh -huh. that they can do it too. And I've always helped people if they come to me with issues about cameras or if they want to know how to sing better or how to breathe deeper. One of the things Pima Chodron, the, the Buddhist monk says is, if you're in a stressful situation, literally take three deep breaths. Just mm -hmm. start there. And they say, oh, that's ridiculous. Well, three deep breaths will oxygenate your body. It'll calm your mind. It'll help you maybe not slap your kid. It'll help you not just do something you'll be sorry you did later. Interesting. I, yeah. Again, no, no chance coincidence that we're talking about this. When I was listening to a podcast this morning, it said, create an interruption. When you know you're hitting your red line mm. or you know you're hitting your stress zone, Absolutely. create an interruption. And whether it's three deep breaths or nine seconds, just say stop or whatever your word is. You know, sometimes people have a word when they're starting to fight with their spouse and that breaks the tension. Well, you can do that personally when you're getting heated up. How mm. about in road rage? You're sitting in that New York yeah. City traffic and yeah. you're losing your mind. You have to create that mental mm -hmm. distraction. Well, that follows on the heels of my next <laughs> question. So I, I call <laughs> the people who are going too slow in front of me angels that help me slow down. <laughs> <laughs> and that so that's kind of a it. cool way to reframe it. Yeah. Right? Yes. Think of it in a different way. Like, I'm late. I'm not going to make my appointment. Oh, you know, whatever. Mm. So when I see someone going really, really fast, I say, oh, poor them. They're so driven and they can't slow down. I feel sorry for them. And it changes, it creates a kindness where there might have been a criticism. Now, is that a muscle you trained yourself to oh, yeah. change? Okay. Oh, yeah. Because you weren't always like that. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Roseanne is laughing. <laughs> Can we be honest? Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah it's of true. course. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. You know, the, the biggest joke in my house is that I'm the least patient person around with a positive motivational <laughs> talk show. <laughs> well, you well, know, I'm not patient all the time, but I, I believe patience is an important quality. Absolutely. And I believe that if you're impatient, you don't get what you want. So I'll be patient because I know it'll get me ultimately what I want, which is peace, calm, and a happy demeanor. Well, I always say it on the show. My grandmother would always say, you cannot be a success until you make someone else a success. Mm. And it's true. And she wow. had sort of had that Buddhist uh, sort That's of mentality, great. like, let it flow away. Go with it. You know, you can, there's only so many things you can control. And th the mental muscle training is to learn which ones you can't control and then to be okay with it. That's beautiful. I like your grandmother. She was a cool cat. She really mm. was. So you're a busy lady other than... That's Mindful really, meditation. really, really, really good. I, I really like what she said. But You have to be thinking in terms of service on some level to help other people because if it's all about you, 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 or like they say, I pods, I this, I that, mm -hmm. sometimes we forget that it's the we part that right. makes the difference. It's very true that, you know, many hands make light work. Mm -hmm. Together we move the ball down the court. Yeah. And we're going to take a quick break because I'm seeing that Eric is giving me that we need to come right back in a couple of minutes. Oh, good. It's the Daily Drive, friends. <laughs> motivational talk on Tuesdays at 1230, later on demand at HAN Network. And Suzanne will be right back. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you.
When you experience a sports injury, you want to get better and fast. Coastal Ortho Express gives you direct access to orthopedic care quickly. Their physicians are fellowship trained in sports medicine at world-class universities and are also team doctors for area football teams. For specialized personal care of sports injuries, go to Coastal Ortho Express. Open Monday through Saturday in the iPark building, 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Coastal Orthopedics, keeping you on the move. While the temperatures are cooling down, the fall bite is heating up. Albies, Bonita, Blackfish, Alligator Blues, and Stripers are following the large schools of bait that are abundant in the Long Island Sound. If you love the New England coast during autumn, this is the time to be on the water. The latest from Shimano, Quantum, Avet, Hoagie, Phase 2 and more are in stock and ready to go at the dock shop. And don't mind those fall breezes with jackets, hats, gloves, and fleece from Grundens and Stormer. The dock shop will keep you warm and dry. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The dock shop, now in two locations, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. In Pound Ridge since 1993, the Wine Connection is one of America's best wine shops. Visit our beautiful store for the greatest in wine and knowledgeable service. With wonderful values from around the world to collectibles for your cellar, we are your one-stop source. Visit our online shop at wineconn.com and make sure to sign up for email updates. With great offers, new arrivals, and special events, don't miss all the action at The Wine Connection, including tastings every weekend. The Wine Connection, located at 32 Westchester Avenue, Pound Ridge, New York. In Pound Ridge. Welcome back. It's The Daily Drive with Denise DiGregoli, Tuesdays live here on hand. The drive is about moving you forward. It's how you fuel yourself, your mind, body, spirit, create your lifestyle. Um, I want everybody to check in with my Facebook page, Denise to Grigley, or My Daily Drive, either one, for helpful tips, replays of this great show. And if you're interested and you've got something, whether it be an idea, an organization, or something you're passionate about that can help our viewers move forward, please connect with me and maybe you can be on the show as well. Today, Suzanne Sheridan, a longtime Westport resident, songwriter, business owner, professional uh, photographer. We've known each other for so long. We've known each other for so long. We actually hadn't seen each other in quite some time. So it's there really was good a to see. Yeah, there was a whole <laughs> bunch of serendipitous events that led up to this, but we believe there's no chance coincidences. Correct. That everything falls into place for a reason. Absolutely. And. Uh, why, why I love Suzanne is because not only is she a multifaceted creative, she lets the river flow. And so I guess we would say that you've allowed your life to happen and you've kind of embraced every twist and turn in the road or every little rock in the river. And today... Well, one thing that Roseanne has helped me with is she says, just say yes. When someone asks you to do something, see if you can get to yes mm -hmm. rather than no. Because no is always more comfortable but yes is always an adventure. Well, I'm going to challenge that only because I'm the oh. one that often says yes yeah. and then I'm complete road pancake yelling yeah. at everyone at home. Oh. So I'd say either one of I those... I don't want to be a road pancake. Yeah, either one of those views are good, <laughs> but you've got to know yourself. You do. You have to say, does this fit with what I believe is my purpose? Right. And then you say yes. But I would never say yes to something that didn't feel right. See, I say yes just because I, as I said, my grandmother would say, in order for you to be a success, you need to make everyone a success. And okay. there were times in my life where I took that too far. Right. And right. There's a big difference between expressing yourself and helping other people and sacrificing who you yeah. really are just to be a yes person. Right. That's not what we're talking about. We're right. talking about saying yes from a place of knowing yourself. And when you know yourself, you say, Yes, because I want to do this. The interesting thing is when you know you've found your passion, mm -hmm. you get lost in the flow and yeah. you forget about time. And all of a sudden it right. was eight when you started and it's now four and you're like, wow, I didn't even eat lunch. <laughs> right. So that's one way to know if you found your true passion. True. So it, yeah, time goes very fast when you're really doing something you love. So you're involved in this headliner for the keys. Yeah, I'm excited about December 5th. December 5th. Uh, it, it sometimes scared me, and I have to say that how you face your fears 
is a very important part of moving ahead, of right. driving yourself to your best place. Right. Nike says, just do it. Just do it. Jump in and try it. Okay, so you're doing that. Change you're is the only positive thing we know. Right. That's what you said in the beginning of the show when we were off air, which was a great comment. Mm. So now, what's lit on the list of creative intentions mm. for Well, I, I, I was talking yesterday to someone who remarked that my next step really is whatever I want it to be. But I want to perform in Europe. I want to perform in Paris, France, wow. where I used to live. I want to perform in, in Amsterdam, where Roseanne used to live. She speaks Dutch. I speak French. Wow. And I would really like to do the Joni Mitchell Leonard Cohen music there, because I believe there is an audience for it all over the world. And this would really, like, jazz me. This would really jazz me. Now, to have you got any? Have you done any creative mind mapping? Have you done any meditation? Have you set intentions out? Like, how are we getting there? Yeah. How are we moving that car forward? Well, uh, I've been on or plane in online. Your case. <laughs> right. I've been online with a woman who is talking about wanting to do some booking. Oh. And I've also reached out to my friends who are musicians and said, you know, how did you do it? How, how was it that you were able to do your tour of Europe? So I'm starting the process of investigating and looking into it and I, I really see it happening I see it I see myself there so you have to kind of see the end result right you see yourself there you see yourself there. and then you work your way backwards starting from what do I need to do today oh here's a really good idea do one thing involving that project every day so every day you write down what are you going to do today you're going to talk to so and so you're going to this is a traditional a sort of visual diagram mapping that's in the book we keep coming back to my book today see wow because i think i need it i think you <laughs> well you might have already <laughs> used it we didn't even know it <laughs> um okay so you're you're moving towards europe anything else here on the uh, local level? Well, Canada, level? I love Canada, and the Canadian people love me, and I've been to North Hatley and performed in theaters up there, and I love performing in theaters because they have lighting and, you know, good sound, and it's good just Good seats. Good, yeah, people get to sit and listen. So many times we try to multitask when we're listening to music, and it's great to be able to watch the musicians, listen to them, and really hear the words. Mm -hmm. So I want to honor the music by having it in those kinds of venues. And Canada seems to be a very good place for that. So, you know, doing more, more fundraisers. I want to do fundraisers next for women's empowerment because women need to be empowered. And like, In well, which ways? Well, think of Malala, that little girl who was, she was uh, fired on by a man and she almost lost the sight in her eye. Oh yeah, that and was. And she's working toward getting every girl in the world educated. Now right. I could get behind that. I think girls need education. There are places in the world where girls are not educated. What a waste. What a freaking waste. These girls need to be educated. So that's a, that's a big intention as well, or a big goal. Oh, yeah. All right. And what would you be doing if, in fact, you weren't doing all of this? Oh, gosh. Yeah. I'd be in the islands, maybe, sailing. <laughs> I really, that's a good question. I mean, one of the dreams I have is to um, just be around turquoise water. Sort yeah. of your favorite color. Yeah, I yeah. love that color. And, and just uh, enjoying the passage of time. But every time I go someplace, I always end up singing. So, so I'll that's be singing sort of your no true matter calling. what. Yeah. So bringing it all the way home, mm. the underlying connections of music, commitment, focus, and creativity. For people that haven't tried music, or for people that have children that are in music. That it's have never too late. That's what they need to know. What about the kids that tried it and maybe have drifted off from it for whatever the reasons are? It could have been they had the wrong teacher. It could have been they weren't ready. It could have been the wrong instrument. I say try it again. Try it again. Try it again. Don't give up on music because music. What does music do? It makes you fully alive. And when you're listening to music, it's not the same as when you're making music. Like, well, I go somewhere else. When I'm performing, I'm not even touching that stage. Mm -hmm. I am somewhere really deep. And it takes me hours to come back to the th three-dimensional world. So we're going to end today's show with saying music makes you alive. Mm. Just do it. Try it. Just try it. And any type of meditation, whether it be active in a reflective tool of writing or traditional meditation and Absolutely. anything in between, you can only make yourself a success when others are made a success by you.
and and love yourself make sure you take time for yourself yeah take time that's for that's really yourself. important to take a little time just for you whatever makes you happy and do it because everybody in your life will benefit I it's the drive. It. I hope you'll join us again in the new I year. Suzanne Sheridan, SuzanneSheridan.com, or you can find all of her links on my website or, as well. And Thank you, Denise. a rebroadcast here on HAN Network. We'll see you next week, Tuesday. Thanks so much. I hope Thank you'll come you. back. Thank Great you to so see you. much.